big snake is actually an arboreal species, and they've been studied to actually go up into trees and hunt snakes. Even you know, to go up into trees, bite vipers, let go, go down to the bottom of the tree, and look up and wait for the viper to fall down and die from the venom. This snake is something that you guys have been suggesting for a very, very long time. One of the most powerful neurotoxins on the planet is within the black mama. She's very striking. There you go, look at that. Black mama, guys. This is the snake that you guys wanted me to deal with for a very long time. And it's finally come, dealing with the black mama. I do not want to stress her out too much, like I said. So big, look at you. Your big fat neck, you're gonna squish it. It's so cute. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm just hanging out here with little Ziggy. It's been a long day of setting up new enclosures for all these new snakes and lizards that I got from a good friend of mine, Albert Killian, with new log change here in South Florida. Private venomous keepers can't have private collections anymore, and they can only have for exhibitation now. So if you have venomous reptiles, you have to be an exhibitor like me, an educator, or you're in the sales business. So my friend gave me his collection because he's in his 60s and he doesn't want to deal with the permits anymore. So he gifted me with a bunch of new cobras and lizards you guys have been seeing over the past couple of days. And now we have one more. Where are you going, Diggy? Where are you going? Oh, God. You're done? There we go. So he calms down the second. I lay him on top of my arm. He does not like to be held. He wants to be respected. Right, Mr. Ziggy. Look at that. Petting his teeth. They have a good relationship. I raised him from a little hatchling. I've grown to build a good bond with this animal. Not really a bond, but good trust with this animal. This animal knows that I'm not trying to hurt it, and that I just want to give it love. So this is Ziggy, my American crocodile. We're gonna put him down because we have a we have one more snake that we have to set up, and then I guess we have two more vipers after that. But this snake's a big deal. We've been building up to it the last couple episodes. We're gonna be taking care of it right after we clean the king cobras, because as you guys know, we recently just fed the king cobras and they're going to the bathroom like crazy now. It's been a couple days. They digest that food fast. It's summertime, so it's nice and warm. So they're pooping like crazy, and we gotta clean those spicy meatballs. Isn't that right, Ziggy? We gotta clean those spicy meatballs. I love you, Ziggy. All right, we're gonna put Ziggy away and clean some king cobras. Come on, Ziggy. Let's go, Ziggy. Let's go. All right, beautiful people, we're about to unlock the king cobras and we're gonna be taking them out so we can clean their enclosure. If you come and look, you can actually see that they're already going to the bathroom. They ate just a couple days ago, but the process of digesting that python has already begun. It's nice and warm out, which means these animals have a higher metabolism. Reptiles rely on their surrounding environment for energy to help digest food. They're what's called ectothermic. So the warmer it gets in summer, the more this animal is going to be able to digest python faster and eat more food. So we're going to have to clean this enclosure because we don't want to have that ammonia in there. It's not fun for the snake. So obviously we want Justina to be nice and happy. Now it's unlocked. We're going to put Justina in this can. There's no water in here, so she's probably going to try and shoot out. When there's water, they tend to settle down. So it's going to be a little interesting. She's quite a spicy specimen. And also, she still has that food digesting in her belly. She's not done yet. So I want to be nice and gentle. Now let's see. I'm going to get my snake hook. I got my lid right here. You should be good to go. And we'll start with Justina and clean her enclosure. Let me take her hide. The tortoise shell, she likes to hide. She's a real thick snake right now. And she's probably going to go through shed soon after eating that good meal. It's okay, relax. It's okay. She's all over the place. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. Tail up. There's Justina, beautiful cover, super defensive, look at her. I guard all the time. She's real twitchy right now. She's real gentle. She's real twitchy right now, it's gotta be real gentle with her. Okay. It's going to be a little difficult with her today. All 
great speed. Alright, there we go. Got her in there. Just some safer smokes to keep her in that container. Nice and secure. Now we can clean this stew that she's painted onto the wall. I've got my spray right here. We're just gonna shoot it up some new stuff. Ooh, this is a, This is gonna be very spicy. I don't know if you want to see this. So. Oh goodness, some of the stuff is just stuck like glue. I'm trying to get it off. I'm gonna need something to pull it off, but it's more spray. It's already crusty. It's under like concrete. Looks like I'm gonna need old Elizabeth. She's been with me for years. Oh yeah! Clean slice. Uh, maybe almost clean. Just a, a couple more sprays and a couple more swipes and a little bit of cleaning and it will look all right. <laughs> hey, pay attention! Come on! Uh. Why are you laughing while I'm teaching you something? Oh, your mother will be so disappointed in little you, little Bobby. All right, we're gonna actually put some of this mulch in for Justina. So I'll take some of it out, get her some fresh mulch, add his enrichment, give her some new scents and smells. Kevin, you'll get your new scents and smells pretty soon. You just gotta wait your turn, buddy. All right, we're gonna put Justina's hiding spot right back up here, her big self kind of tortoise shell. That's about it. We're going to put her back in our enclosure. The water's good to go. Put this over here. All right, she's on fire, so everyone be ready. All right, guys, we're going to put Justina back now. I'm sorry. She's so upset. Big girl. Okay, I got you. Oh, she's growling. Go ahead. She's so tense right now. She's still got a lot of meat inside her from the python she's got digest. So we'll let her be. Look at her. She's such a beautiful snake. Her throat is beautiful yellow. Such a gorgeous animal. And let me just lock up her enclosure. There we go. And a little bit of a poke. A twist of a key, and she cannot get out and be gone free. All right, so oh my goodness, where we got a lot to clean. Look, he sprayed the glass. He decided I'm going to be like Picasso today and give Chandler the nicest cleaning to do. He's gonna be scrubbing the walls. All right, big beautiful Kevin's up next. He's sure gonna be fun, especially with no water in the can. He's gonna be shooting all over the place probably. So let's get to it and bring out. King Kevin, the Malaysian King Cobra. So smart. Come here, buddy. Come here. Look at these beautiful colors. All right, I'm gonna have to get the coil that's here. Right I'm sorry. Hey, hey, hey. Get out of punch it, There we go. Oh, and we're making a mess. We're making a mess. We're doing this today, Kevin. Okay, we're doing this today. There we go. Oh, that's a lot of King Cobra. Come here, Kevin. There we go. I hear you. I'm sorry. So, we got Kevin the King Cobra. Let him stretch out for a second. His colors are on. Fire, man! I don't know if you guys can see from this angle, but his chevrons are on fire, super yellow right now. He's a beast of a snake. God, I love this king cobra. It's okay. Relax, Kevin. Just gonna go real slow. There we go. Let's see if we can make this somewhat easy. a lot easier.
easier than Justina. All right, put the cyber smoke right there so he can't bust out. Should have closed his back. All right, extra cleaning. No problem. Let's get to the cleaning. Okay, guys, we're getting out all the poop. There's quite a bit because he's such a big snake and he took down such a big meal. He had a five foot long Burmese python. Maybe it won't want to wait six foot, who knows. But he was a beast of a python. He got swallowed by Kevin. Easy meal. Digesting it like it's nothing. He's going to bat from over the place. So we just gotta make sure it's nice and clean in here for the king. Alright, so we're gonna put the water bowl right up here. We're gonna put a lot more mulch in here because there's a lot of poop, so we had to take a lot of it out. Push fresh mulch in there. Humans gonna love this. New smells. Just clearing the track really quick, making kind of a bit more of a mess actually. But this technique just seems to work pretty good too. We're good to go. The glass is clean. The mulch has been replaced with fresh mulch. Now we can put the king back where he belongs. Cool. Okay, we're good to go. Just need to put the water bowl back, and we can put Kevin back inside his enclosure. Awesome. Let's get him back. Back home. I actually want to get Kevin stretched out right here just so you guys can see how long he is right now. I'm not going to stretch him out obviously with my hands and pull him apart, but I'm going to let him move the way he wants to move. So, yeah, just go right over there. I'm going to let him stretch out, get some exercise. Actually, come come over here real quick and get a look at this. He's actually never mind, he's going to come with somebody. Never mind. Hey, Kevin. So here we have Kevin, the King Cobra. He's not too bad right now. I'm gonna let him come out, and I want him to stretch. So you guys can see how long he's actually getting. Look at this. Go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead. So look at this. Look how long. Kevin's getting right here. Show you guys how long he is. Oh, Kevin, don't go in there, Kevin! No, don't go there. Don't go there, Kevin. Okay. So, look at that. Look how long Kevin. Oh, don't go over there, Kevin! No, no. Don't go over there! Uh. Alright, so I was going to show you guys how long he's getting. <laughs> I think I have to keep a hand on him because he's going over the place. I want to step on your tail, buddy. You like the plants? I just got these. You like them? Checking them out. Your sense and smells. So as you can see, Kevin is looking really good right now. He's real calm at the moment. He knows that I'm not a threat at the moment. I'm just hanging out with him, letting him stretch a little bit before I put him back in the enclosure. Since this is a snake-proof room, as inspected by Florida Fish and Wildlife, I can let this animal stretch across in the room, roam around, as long as I have supervision over the animal, it's all good to go. So, this beautiful snake will stretch, and come out of the cage and move around, whereas I can't take the snake out and put it outside in a grassy field or something like that. No exotic snakes, no exotic venomous snakes can be taken outside out of the first containment area. So, basically, the snake room is containment, it's snake proof, it's been inspected by Florida Fish and Wildlife, but if I were to take this animal outside the snake room, that would make it illegal. So I keep this guy inside the snake room, I have this big space to let him stretch out, and in the future, we'll be building them big walk-in enclosures for all the King Cobras. So Justina, Kevin, and hopefully the future King Cobras that are going to join the family, they're all going to have big walk-in enclosures, lots of space, big trees so they can actually climb throughout the trees because this big snake is actually an arboreal species and they've been studied to actually go up into trees and hunt snakes. Even known to go up into trees, bite vipers, let go, go down to the bottom of the tree and look up and wait for the viper to fall down and die from the venom. And most of the time they usually just grab the viper, hold on to it and inject the venom to eat it alive. But new things are being discovered all the time, especially when they have groups out there like the King Cobra Conservancy that tracks King Cobras every day for weeks on end to learn everything about them, their hunting habits, where they go during the day, during the year, throughout the year, depending on the temperatures, they learn so much about them. So check out the King Cobra Conservancy, link below. I mentioned them in a prior video saying that you guys can also donate to help them so they can continue their tracking projects and help protecting King Cobras in Thailand, 
Borneo, and India. So definitely check that out. All right, we're going to put Kevin right back in his enclosure. Look at him. If I pull his tail a little bit over here, you can get a good idea of how long he's got at the tail end right over here. And he's still got a good seven, maybe eight foot portion on the ground. Look at that. It's okay, relax. It's okay. He's like, you better stop touching my tail. I don't appreciate that at all. Okay. Just give his attention a little bit. So I'm going to pick him up. Oh. Here we go, buddy. There we go. Nice and smooth into the enclosure. Big, beautiful king. I love him. All right. Come on, get in there. What are you doing? Put this raptor on. Here he comes. Good thing the glasses is there. All right, so now that we're done cleaning up the King Cobras, we're going to finally show you the new snake that we got. This is a snake you guys have been wanting me to get for a long time. I'm going to meet you by the cage, get something to drink, cool off, lock up the cage, and get ready for this snake because I'm going to need all my concentration focused on this guy. Can you guess what it is? It's a... Not gonna tell you yet! Wait a second! All right, guys. So here we are. The final snake that I wanted to show off to you guys. We still have two more viper species that we gotta show off to you. We've seen the sharp-nosed viper, and there's one more viper that he's gonna give to me. We're gonna check out that stuff a little more the next episode. For this episode, we're ending it with a banger. We're ending it with a species of snake that you got in the title, most likely, because I would... Pretty sure I'd pick this for the thumbnail. This snake is something that you guys have been suggesting for a very, very long time. This is a snake that Albert Killian raised for the past several years. Uh, I believe probably the past six or so years. Maybe even with my hatchling. This is probably like a, a six to eight year old snake. And I haven't got it stretched out before. I haven't had, had a chance to actually handle the snake before. Uh, I was put straight to the box and taped up in the double bag. And I took him out of the double bags and I put him inside the vision cage where he's going to live. This is a black mamba. This is a female black mamba. And like I said, Albert, my friend Albert, is the one who gave it to me. Therefore, the name I'm about to give it, which I'm going to tell you guys as soon as I get him out. So let's see, I gotta open this up. Alright guys, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment of truth, guys. We're going to take off the mamba. The mamba is in the box. It is hot. It's fully loaded. It's got venom. This snake is no joke. Let's see how it is. Here we go. Check this out. Super flight already. I'm going to point the snake towards you guys. So you get a good look at it. Check that out. That is a female black mamba. This one's probably around seven to maybe even nine feet long. I have not seen it fully stretched out, and I think in about a second we're about to see this guy fully stretched out. This is a very intelligent snake, a diurnal snake species that relies on eyesight. So even the little flinching of my fingers right now is upsetting this snake. It is a completely eyesight motivated animal. This animal relies on its eyes. It does not hunt at night. It completely hunts during the day, looks for little bits of movement, and pursues those things. It pursues those chameleons, rats, lizards, and small birds. It makes up most of the diet of the black mamba. And look at, she's actually, she's checking me out, she's trying to figure out what's going on. She's a super twitchy snake. And the last thing I want to do is stress her out too much. And remember guys, this is a black mamba. I want to be very careful too. One bite and I can be dead in 30 minutes. It's no joke. One of the most powerful neurotoxins on the planet is within the black mama. She's already striking. All over the place. She is a nine foot beast of a black mama. Look at that. Ooh, ooh. 
There we go, look at that black mama, guys. This is the snake that you guys wanted me to deal with for a very long time. And it's finally come dealing with the black mamba. I do not want to stress her out too much. Like I said, she. Ooh. All right. We don't want to stress her out too much. So we're going to get her inside that enclosure and let her start relaxing. Look at this beautiful nine foot long black mamba. Has the utmost respect for me and we're gonna to get to know each other real well. I've known this mamba for years. This is a mamba that Albert Killian's been raising for a very long time, and I've seen it grow over the years. She's a beast of a black mamba, and the issue he's had over the years is he's never found a male for this female. So she's sexually mature, and she's been dropping eggs that are infertile, and all he ever wanted to do was breed this snake. But sadly, with the new law change, you can't have personal pet venomous snake collections anymore. You can only have these animals for exhibitation, education, basically right where you're seeing right here, exhibitation, having these animals on display so I can teach you about them, so I can teach the public about them. So, what I'm going to do is find her a sweet male, a sweet, sweet African male to make her happy so they can have nice little mamba babies and she can do that cycling, have her babies go through that. Look at her. I'm out of breath. That was, that was amazing. That was my first time dealing with a large black mamba. I've dealt with green mambas. Never a large black mamba. Look how massive this snake is. Look how big this snake is. I was saying seven to eight feet long. No, this snake is probably nine to ten feet long. It's a beast of a black mamba. She's checking out the whole area. She's new smells for her, new enclosure, lots of space. She's loving it. I actually screw these pieces of wood onto the side of the cage so they won't move. They're nice and sturdy. She has nice spots to rest up, get off, off the ground, coil up, and check out everything. Check it out. Look at this. So like I was saying earlier, she's just been producing lots of infertile eggs. She's never had her own mate. So I want to get her a boyfriend so she can produce some babies. And I think Albert will be happy to hear that she went through a, a whole production cycle. She went through a, a whole breeding cycle and actually produced her own young. Because I know over the years she's produced lots of slugs and he always wanted to find a male for this girl. So for the name, you guys know that with Justina, my King Cobra, that King Cobra was originally raised by my good friend Justin. That King Cobra is a female, so Justina. So that's how I got up with that name. This Black Mamba is a female. If it was a male, I would have named it Bill. Because Kill Bill, the Black Mamba, good name, I know, I know. But female, so in honor of Albert Killian, I'm gonna name this female Black Mamba, Allison. Allison the Black Mamba. Oh, sorry Allison. Allison, Allison don't play me. Allison is a new part of this family. I love her. She's a badass snake. Look, from that side of the cage all the way draped on the back, coming down to here. That's how long this snake is. She is a beast of a black mom. I hope you guys got a good shot when I had her out. You see, she was squirting poop out. My method when it comes to snake handling is, oh, she's gonna get a drink of water. My method when it comes to snake handling is always grab past the cloaca. So there's the tip of the tail past the cloaca. I want to go further past that, and I want to support the animal so it's not uncomfortable and not pulling on the tip of the tail. I didn't have a good grab on the snake, and she was all over the place, so I don't want to rest trying to reach up like I would with a normal cobra. This is a member of the cobra family, the Lapidae, but this is nothing like a cobra. They have a false little hood, they'll flare up when they're upset, but I'll tell you what, this thing is more athletic than any cobra I've ever handled in my life. I'll tell you that. This snake is so notorious to all snake handlers. It has the utmost respect for anyone out there. Even this guy who's playing with king cobras all day, handling them, free handling. King cobras versus mambas. Mambas are a whole different game. This is a pogo stick with fangs. Enough neurotoxin to drop you dead in 30 minutes. And there are cases that quick. But nothing like a good name like Allison to make her seem like a sweet animal so you guys grow to love the black mama, just like you grew to love Kevin the King Cobra. There's a lot we can learn from this snake, and a lot we're going to see from her in the future. So, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, but most of all, stay safe. Yeah, mainly stay safe, but stay gangster. Don't blame it.